Welcome back again to the book of Philippians, and we're at Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. We'll read it, then we'll think about it a little bit. There's a bunch of stuff packed in here, and we're taking these piece by piece, so they all kind of go together. We can't do the, the whole piece in one day, but here's verse 6, okay? I'll go ahead and begin with read verse 5 and into verse 6. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, verse 6, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. There's something percolating through the world today. It's a teaching that Jesus is somehow uh, akin to a created being. There was a time when Jesus was not, and there's a time when he was, and so Jesus becomes like a created being, right? The Bible does not teach that. No matter how many quotes or random things you can bring forward. The Bible simply doesn't teach it. The Bible does teach, if you go to the Gospel of John chapter 1, that in the beginning, Jesus was with God. He was always with God, the Word. He was in the form of God. He didn't consider robbery to be equal with God. Jesus is equal with God. This is what our text says. Jesus has infinite power. God the Father has infinite power. There really are not any substantive differences between Jesus and the Father. There are two different persons in one God. The Bible clearly teaches three distinct personages. At the same time, it clearly teaches that God is one. What's the difference is that Jesus came and took human flesh and lived in it. The Father and the Holy Spirit did not do that. But he is equal with God, according to this text, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. So this text is asserting Jesus is equivalent. Jesus, the person, is equivalent to God the Father, the person. So let's never get it in our mind that somehow we're worshiping a lesser God, God Jr., Jesus, who's, you know, a score of 99 on the infinite power scale, and the Father is a score of 100 on the infinite power scale. Jesus is all-powerful, the Father is all-powerful, but in the, in the economy between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus submits himself to the Father, and of course, the three of them all submit to each other. And of course, the three of them live together, love together, and submit themselves to each other. You know, there's a lot of rabbit trails, and the devils have a fun time getting us off, running off into the rabbit trails. Stay close. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus and the Father are of equal nature. This is a text that shows us that. We're not worshiping just a man who God said, hey, this guy's pretty good. Let's let's uh, promote him. That's not what we're talking about. Jesus is God in the fullest sense. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily is in him. And some people at least are venturing off into the rabbit trails, theological rabbit trails, losing their way when it's very soon Jesus will come and we can we can get into some of the details at that future time. Right now we just go by what the Bible shows us and we be blessed. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that we worship God, a God who is 100% righteous, 100% powerful. Thank you for Jesus, who is equal to the Father in strength. Lord, you all know it better than we do. We submit ourselves to you. We submit ourselves to the word, and we say, yes, Lord, keep on teaching us. Keep on growing us. Most of all, may we be like Jesus in our kindness and gentleness toward others, in our seeking of your righteousness. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Important thing today, to see Jesus as fully God, equal with the Father. At least Paul thought so in Philippians 2, verse 6. God be with you today.